Matthew's Gospel and chapter 15. And just as you're turning there as well too, one wee question. Um, last week we, we sent we in our prayer request Monday after Monday. Um, and last week for some reason, I don't know what was wrong with my phone, um, very few people seem to get it. Uh, so guys, if, if you're get, are you getting them on a Monday or no? Monday night. Monday night or something wrong with that. Monday night. Anybody else? Anybody, is everybody getting them? Uh, so, yeah, that's great because I said it four times. That's good. So, yeah, that's good, good, good. Anybody got it four times? No. No? Right, that's okay. Right, uh, well, do you know something? Maybe, maybe I have too many people on the list or something. I'm not asking you to leave the list. I'm going to just do over two or three lists. Uh, because maybe it's too much to do at one particular time, but uh, I want you all to get them because well, there's things I want you all to be praying into as well too. So that's good to know. But I mean, they asked me that the last couple of weeks was just last week. We noticed that I kept coming back, bouncing back again and again and again. And also, it was close to swearing. And I'm not one, I'm not one for swearing, but you can see the wee green line that it's stopping, and then the next thing you see, all these wee I, I, it didn't go through, didn't go through, and you're going, oh, come on. You know, but we'll get it sorted out some way or the other. Because, listen, the Lord's here and he's answering our prayers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matthew 15. And we'll break into this chapter at verse uh, 29. In fact, just above this here, my Bible has a little title that says, Jesus heals many. It says, and Jesus departed from thence, and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. Listen to this. And he healed them all. Hallelujah. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Let's glorify the God of Israel this morning too by just taking a moment to pray again and to thank him for his word. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And Lord, we just simply ask that you'll bless these few remarks that I will make. May they be a blessing to your people. May they be an encouragement to your people. And Lord, perhaps it may be a challenge to someone, even here this morning in the room, or whether they're watching online. But Lord, we ask that you would do and see fit with this word, as you will, in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. 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 I know we're not supposed to have favorite verses and favorite chapters. But we are into that sort of thing. We all have our favourite verses and we all have our favourite chapters. And this is certainly one chapter that I love reading over and over and over again. It just blesses my heart. It is a wonderful chapter. It's a great chapter. And why I say it's a great chapter? Because in this chapter you will find great miracles. You'll find great teaching. You'll find great correction. You'll find great faith. And you'll find great multitudes and you'll find great compassion. Now they are not our points this morning. Uh, but that's what you'll find right from the off right through to the very, very end. And the great teaching you'll find in verse 4, God commanded saying, Honour thy father and mother. That's good teaching even for today as well too, you know. To honour our father and our mother if they're still with us. I thank God I still have mine. I'm so, so blessed. I have godly parents. And of course there's great correction in verses 7 to 10. And verse 8 somebody tells us this, Thou, that this people draweth nigh unto me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Folks, I trust and pray that's never us. That we're glorifying the Lord with our lips and we're raising our hands and our, and our voices and, and yet our hearts are far, far, far away. Hope and pray that will never be us. And of course we see great faith. That woman of Canaan, whose daughter was tormented by a devil, tormented by a demon. And of course we know that she, she actually says it's just greatly vexed with this devil. But of course the Lord, as when she comes to the Lord at that time, and of course another conversation that they have in verse 28, the Lord Jesus says to her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. Folks, we don't need the Lord to do some great thing. We just need the Lord to look our way, to speak a word. And that's all that we simply need. Of course we see the great multitude, those of the 4,000 that are fed, that which is wonderful as well too. We see them all coming to, to, be, to be fed with the loaves and with the fishes. And that's one thing that we can remind ourselves of as well this morning. That little is much 
when God is in it. Seven little things, five little loaves and two little fish. And my goodness, they fed 4,000 people. And we know that the same thing done 5,000. And we know that this time around there were seven baskets over. And the next time when the Lord done it, there was 12 baskets full. He doesn't do anything by half measure. He doesn't half save you. He doesn't half heal you. He doesn't half anoint you. He doesn't half call you. You're called glory to God. And it's truly, truly wonderful. But you know, prior to the feeding of them, you see great compassion from the Lord Jesus. It says, then Jesus called his disciples and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me for three days. I'll not send them away fast unless they faint along the way. And of course, the great miracle which is there, verses 36 and 37, let me read it to you. And he took the seven loaves and fishes and gave thanks and break them and give them to his disciples and his disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and they were all filled. Hallelujah. Not sent away half full. Fill. Praise your Lord. Fill. Glory to God. I want us this morning to leave this building filled again. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with his anointing. Filled because we have been sitting here in his presence this morning. Filled with all the good things. You know, in the Lord Jesus, the word of God tells us that there are pleasure at his right hand. Good things at his right hand. Now, hallelujah, and forevermore. So let's not leave here this morning half empty. Let's leave full this morning and full of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they did eat and they were filled. And they took up the broken meat and there were seven baskets full. More than enough. But you know, right in the middle of this little chapter, the, the, our text this morning that we have read, right in the middle of it all, I think it's wonderful. We see the Lord going up into the mountain top and the multitudes following him. They followed him throughout the day. They'd seen him doing some of the most incredible things. And you know what they have done is they've, they've gone home to their own homes. And they've brought out the sick and the lame. They've brought out those that, are, that, that, that need a touch from God. And they said, we know where to bring them. They don't need to take them to a doctor. They don't need to take them anywhere. Take them, get them to the Lord. And folks, that's where the blessing is, still is today. Boy, we need to get ourselves to the Lord. Some of us in here this morning need a healing touch from the Lord. And yes, thank God for doctors and thank God for what they can do. But let's be honest. We need him more than anyone else. We need the great physician. We need him to touch us and to heal us. If we only just look our way to speak the word, you know, and we will be healed. Hallelujah. The multitude, they follow him into the mountain. They bring with them the lame, the blind, the dumb, the maimed, and others. And they bring them. And it's, it says that they cast them. They bring them to the Savior's feet. And what I love is this, that there wasn't one of them turned away. There wasn't one said, oh, well, I can't have you, I can't have you. He healed each and every single one of them. Hallelujah. Folks, he still heals today. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we're just looking out for it. It's a fast food. When it come to one window, we say, Lord, will you heal us? And when the next time we come to the next window of, of prayer, we want it to be done. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through ragged places and, and jagged places and, and places where we wonder, Lord, why are we even here? But he's taking us on a journey. And you see, in those places, what's he doing? He's getting rid of a lot of the nonsense that we have in our lives. Getting rid of some of the rough edges. He's smoothing us out, hallelujah. He's making us more like him. Because he was afflicted with many, many things. Not to say any illnesses or anything like that. Because he was pure and there was no sin in him. Hallelujah. But folks, and they're wonderful. He healed them all. He could heal us this morning too. The multitude, what do they do when they see this? They glorify the God of Israel. We're not looking for miracles this morning. We're just looking for people to praise the Lord for who he is. Say, Lord, I want to praise you. Because you are above all things. Hallelujah. You are the Lord. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. I want to praise you, Lord, because you've saved me. You've brought me into your kingdom. You've written my name in the Lamb's book of life, and I'm yours. I want to praise you for that this morning. And you know what I think is wonderful? With all these illnesses that are mentioned, I was reading through this this week, I began to think of myself. Boy, I have been struggling the walk of late. I don't know what it is. Well, I do know what it is, but that's for another story for another time. But boy, oh boy, when you think of it, walking's dead easy. Kids love walking. 
I used to love walking. I hate walking. I, I honestly, if I thought I could get somebody to carry me about, I would have gladly let them do it. I'm not exactly a wee wave that can be carried, so therefore I have to walk myself. That's the way that it is. It's tough on me. But anyway, but you must have thought about this. It is easy to walk. And when you're walking, you're a youngster, when you're walking, you want to run. And you never stop. And it's the easiest thing you put one foot in front of the other. I'm walking like the bionic man now, I guess. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But folks, there are those. And they are lame spiritually. Ah, thank God within the spiritual. I can run a marathon. Hallelujah. All those things. Folks, you can be dumb. You can be dumb spiritually. You can be blind spiritually. You can be maimed. You can have been injured spiritually. You can be carrying all these hurts. All of them are there. And folks, you want to know something this morning? This world is full of people who are spiritually blind this morning. They think they have it all together. And they have nothing because they haven't got Christ in their lives. You've got Christ in your life. You're all together. Hallelujah. You mightn't feel all together. You mightn't even on the outside look all together. But you've got it all together. And you've got it all together in heaven. You're dumb. You're blind if you don't know him as Savior. And you're maimed and you're injured. But lame. You know, folks, you know, when the Lord was speaking to me through this, you know, he was saying it's time for us, even as believers, to get rid of the spiritual aids that we use at times. Get rid of the crutches and totally rely upon him. Now, I'm speaking to myself this morning. I remember John Stone, many of you remember John was here for a good number of years, one of our elders, a good godly man. He taught me this. He says, the preacher will always preach to himself first. And I believe I've learned something even from these few words that the Lord gave me throughout the week. I trust and pray as we pass this on to you, that you can take something away this morning as well too. Time for us to get rid of the aid of the spiritual crutches. Time for us to get rid of the self-help aids. Now I know there's nothing wrong with some of these help, self-help books and all of that, but I tell you what, we need to depend upon the Lord for all things. Get rid of that crutch of dependence upon others. Release that, that dependence upon yourself and upon your good deeds and the crutches of worldly means. You might be able to look after yourself a wee bit better than some others. Get rid of that. And rely upon anything else but the Lord. Get rid of all these crutches of reasoning. And it's time for us, I believe wholeheartedly, in childlike faith, to come to the Lord and say this morning, Lord, whatever it is I'm using to try and hold myself, I'll take it away in Jesus' name. And you uphold me with your hand. You uphold me with your power this morning. You uphold me with your strength. Anything I'm holding on that's not yours, oh God, take it away in Jesus' name. You know, because when we walk, folks, as we, as we walk, and yes, we, 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 I think of, of old Jacob, you know, how he walked before he met the Lord. You know, the, the, the angel wrestled with him that day. He knocked his hip, but he walked with a limp ever since then. But it was the best he ever walked, as it were, spiritually. He'd been dramatically changed. And folks, this morning, we need to learn to walk. We need to learn 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, to walk by faith and not by sight. Too much we're looking around us. Too much we're looking at the world and see what they're doing. Too much we're looking even over our shoulders to see what other churches are doing or what other Christians are doing. Walk by faith, folks. Walk in, in the faith. Walk in the faith. Walk and look off onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If you're hanging on to anything else, folks, you're lost. If you're hanging on to anything else but Christ for eternal things, you're damned. That's the way that it is. And this little verse, I love where it's actually hung. This is how we know the word of God is the word of God. This little verse is hung between two great verses pertaining to our hope, which is absent from the body and present with the Lord. This is the hope that we have. That whenever it comes to our time, whenever we have to... Lay the vessel down, as it were. When we can go no further, then that's when faith comes over. And we do, we walk by faith and not by sight. In all things, by faith. Let's walk in faith. Let's live in faith. Let's pray by faith. Let's look to Jesus for all things. Not just the, the small things, or not just the big things that come our way, but every single thing. Look to him. And walk by faith and not by sight. You know, people will tell you, you can't do it. You can't do that. You're no good for that. You're not called for that. What does God say about it? What does the Lord say about these things? 
Let's not listen to what the world has to say. But let's listen to what the Lord has to say. Walk by faith. You know, there are times whenever we do really need to get back to that again. And let's get our eyes off all the things left and right and just keep looking on to Jesus. Not only that, folks, but we are saved by faith. So let us walk in the newness of life. Romans 6 and verse 4 tells us this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That, 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 that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. We don't walk in newness of life, folks. When we're walking day by day spiritually as believers, and we're still walking in the older paths, not the old paths, and the older paths, than what we were like before we were saved, then we have to ask ourselves, are we even saved at all? Is, is, is our focus upon Christ and Him crucified? Uh, is our life totally consumed by Him and by Him alone? Or is your life consumed with all the cares and all the worries and all of the concerns? Or maybe all the glitter? Or maybe all the gold of the world? If that's the thing that's consuming you, I want to tell you something. You're not walking in the newness of life. Christ died that we might have life and life abundant. And yet how many of us, folks, are walking in this new abundant life? Too many of us, and I say this even about myself, too many of us are walking in two camps. We've got one foot in one camp and one foot in the other camp. Time for us to leave the middle of the road, folks, and take a big a choice. It's time for us to go, Joshua, choose you this day whom ye serve. And let's hope that we can stand and say, as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Walk in the newness of this life. Walk in the abundant life. Walk in a life which is full and which is free. Which is full of liberty. Hallelujah. Do you know the liberty of the Holy Spirit in your life? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there's nothing like it, you know. Walk in a life free in Christ. Free of all the restrictions of this world. Not being conformed to this world. Not thinking like this world. Not acting like this world. Not wanting to be like the world. Oh, hallelujah. Free of all those restrictions and get rid of all those crutches. A life surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, many of you know my testimony. And you know that before I was saved, all I was interested in was me. Me. Me and money. That's all I wanted. Me and the glitter and gold. That's all I was interested in. I wanted to have the biggest car on the street. I wanted to have the fanciest watch on the end of my arm. I wanted to have the biggest bank balance. I wanted to have the newest phone. I wanted to have the best clothes. I wanted to have all those things. Folks, they're only for the fire. Every rotten one of them. All the fancy cars, do you know where mine are? Eastwood somewhere, in a scrapyard. And I used to spend my Sundays out polishing my little idols, and I thought they were wonderful. They're all gone away. They're all scrap. They were scrap even when I had them, you know. But they're even worse now. Or they're tin cans somewhere in China. That's where it is. All the fancy clothes don't fit me anymore. Because they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Hallelujah. It doesn't bother me anymore. My bank balance is so much smaller. My wallet's not as thick as what it used to be anymore. I wouldn't be allowed to carry a gold card. I don't care. Because I've got a ticket for heaven. Praise and that's worth more than all those things put together. Hallelujah. Praise I'm saved. My name's written in heaven. That's all I want. To hear him say morning after morning. Son, you're mine. You're mine. Hallelujah. Bless that's you, all I ever wanted. Hallelujah. Praise Walking in the Lord. newness of life. It makes all things new. Love how Aris was saying last week, which was sharing sure our testimony, that the evening as she gets, she's woke up the next morning, the grass looked greener, the sky looked bluer, the clouds looked whiter, and that's the way that it is when we're walking in the newness of life. He makes all things new. New desires. Once I got saved, I realized, Lord, I want to go your way. Not my way, your way. And the best thing we ever done. And folks, we are, those of us who are saved this morning, we are new creations in Him. The old has passed away. The old ways have passed away. And He's rose to give us this new life and new hopes. And those hopes are in Christ Jesus. 
Not only that, folks, but we walk in the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And this is where I just love walking in the Spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 16, Paul compel, compels us. He says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. And this is what, this is what the blessing is. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I can just go home now. That's all you need to hear. Walk in the Spirit of God. I shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Brilliant. What does that mean? All those carnal things that the world puts all its precedent on and puts its value into, you'll no longer be interested in. You'll no longer be interested in. You'll no longer be after the lust of the flesh or the lust of the world or anything. There's such a contrast between a spiritual believer and a carnal believer. And you know, the people say, you can't have carnal believers. There are, there are carnal Christians out there. And you know something? You can tell them a mile off. You only have to spend half an hour with them, five minutes even with them. And you've got to listen to them. Listen to their conversation. Look at how they're dressed. Spend time with them for a moment or two. And you'll find exactly what they're about. When you start talking to them about the Lord Jesus and the great things that he's done, the carnal Christian will just seem to glaze over. They don't seem to have much of an interest in those things. When you talk to somebody who's walking in the spirit, you start talking about the Lord. Oh, there's something jumping within their spirit. Something jumping within their soul. Why is it? Because his name, what is it? It's like honey to your lips, isn't it? Oh, it's like water for our souls. Hallelujah. Something wonderful about it. When you're walking in the Spirit, how do you do that? You're walking in the Spirit. You're asking the Holy Spirit for help and for all strength. When you're walking spiritually lame, that's when you're walking carnally. But you know, we can walk. We lose all the desires that the flesh overtakes us. When we walk in the Spirit, we conquer the flesh. We don't go the old way. We don't have the old desires anymore. We want to go Christ's way. We get victory over sin. Not just today. We get victory over sin tomorrow. And on Tuesday. And on Wednesday. And on Thursday. And on Friday. And so on and so on and so on. Number of weeks ago I was telling you whenever I was struggling with the old cigarettes when I was first saved. I thought, well, okay, I'm not going to smoke all week, but I'm going to smoke on a Thursday. Silly, silly, silly things. Silly things we tell ourselves. Okay, I'm not going to sin. I'm going to do my best not to sin all week. But you know, maybe you've never had a day off. Maybe we'll have a wee day like Thursday or Friday. Sure, it's all right. No, sin is sin is sin, folks. Oh, hallelujah. And you know how we beat the devil? Rebuke him. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Rebuke him with the word of God. And he, resist him, and he will flee. Hallelujah. We get victory over sin. When we walk in the spirit and newness of life, we walk by faith. When we have a total reliance, when you wake up in the morning and you can say, Lord, I can't do anything without you. I have a total reliance upon him and say, Lord, I need you today. I need you more today. That's my little prayer every single morning as I sit on the edge of my bed. Lord, I needed you yesterday, but Lord, I need you more today. Is today going to be harder than yesterday? Well, sometimes it can be. And you know, as I get up tomorrow morning, should the Lord allow me? I'm going to sit at the edge of my bed and I'm going to say the same thing. Lord, I need you more today than what I did yesterday. Why? Because Sunday was special? No, but because Monday can sometimes be hard. And then the devil can always be there. We need to realize that Christ is enough. Micah 6 and verse 8. I love this verse. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require? What does the Lord require of you? The Lord requires this. To do justly. To love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. To live with him. Totally surrendered to him, walking humbly and reverently before the Lord and before men. This is where I hate these popped up, blew up Christians with a wander about the place. Can you see me? There's me and there's no one like me. Listen, the Lord would even have a word for you. He says, I hate the proud and he resists them. Friends, let's not be like that. I don't mean to say we have to go about like a doormat now. There are people wiping their feet on us. You know, we need to remember that we're. I know people hate me saying this, but it's true, you know. We are only sinners saved by grace. Yes, we are priests. Yes, we are kings. Yes, we're all those things as well. But friends, we need to remember where we have come from and also where we're going as well too. We need to be alive by his spirit. We need to be washed in his blood, hallelujah. We need to be quickened by his spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to be led by him in all our ways, acknowledging him, and he will direct our paths. So we need to be humble. Do justly in the love of mercy. You know, John 2 John 6 says this, and this is love. 
that we walk after his commandments. That is, you heard from the blessings, you should walk in it. Folks, there's too many people today, and they're hearers of the word, they're not doers of the word. Let's be doers of the word. Let's not just hear it. Let's not hear it and just understand it and say, oh, you know what? The wee man's right this morning, but that's not for me, that's for someone else. If the Spirit's telling you that's for you, it's definitely for you this morning. Let's not be hearers, but doers of the word. I love what the Lord says to us. You know, I love what he says. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. We'll hold on to his promises. We'll stand on his promises and we'll believe everyone. You know, walking, as I said earlier on, is one of the easiest things to do in the natural. But you know, in the natural, when hindrances come, when the aches and pains come, when the trials of life come, when illness comes, like that sin can hold you back. The weights that can slow you down. All of those things. It gets harder and harder and harder to do. And spiritually, these are the things that the old enemy will try to place upon us. But push you through and get through. Not only that, folks. We're quick here because our time is gone. We need to walk in his wisdom. Walk in his truth. Colossians 4 verse 5 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. 3 John 4 says, tells us this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Walk in wisdom. Walk in the knowledge that the Lord is with you in all his ways. Walk in the truth. Walk in his truth, not your perceived truth. Walk in his great promises. Know that your sins are forgiven. Know that your name is in heaven. And finally, folks, and this is the big, 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 big one. Walk in love. Ephesians 5 and verse 2. And walk in love as Christ hath loved us and hath given himself for us. Hallelujah. As a sacrifice to God and as a sweet smelling savour. The Lord Jesus tells him, love one another. And by this, all will know that you're mine. That's what's wrong with the church today. We don't love each other. We need to learn to love each other again. Not just like each other. Love each other. In spite of our feelings, in spite of our faults, in spite of our fallings, we need to love each other. And walk in this. And I know that another one they can point, I want to be able to live in such a way that when anybody points at me, they don't point and say, I remember what he was like. I'm sure some people can do that. But I want people to be able to point and say, he's a Christian. Be known. Not by how you dress on Sunday in the big Bible where you're on coming into church. Be known, folks. Or for how you live and for who you are. May people see the change in us. That wonderful change has been wrought since Jesus has come into our hearts. Yes, Praise yes. his wonderful name. We have a wonderful glory, don't we? We have a wonderful hope. Jesus died and he rose again. We're saved. We're justified. We're sanctified. Hallelujah. The wee man's come up the same close and a song at the end here. Glory to God. But as he goes up there, let's close our eyes in prayer and ask for the Lord's help this morning. Great to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. And it's great to be with you this morning. Can I say as they're close, I want to thank each of you for your prayers this week. It's been a long, long, long week. But it's been a short one in the Lord. And the Lord's been good. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in prayer. And Lord, that we can reach out and we can touch the Lord as you make your way past. Father, in these closing moments that we have here in this house this morning, I just pray, dear God, that we eat individually, but spiritually reach out, oh God. There are so many things that we need, oh Lord, in our lives. There are people here this morning who need healing in their bodies, oh God. Father, I pray that they would reach out and they would receive that healing right now in the lovely name of Jesus. Lord, there are those who need peace within their hearts and peace within their minds. And peace within their souls. Lord, I pray that they will be able to reach out as well. And that, Lord, if you would pour in that wonderful virtue from heaven. And that, Lord, if they would leave this place drastically changed by how they walked in through the door. Lord, we don't know who's watching online. Lord, we don't know how they stand with you. But, Lord, if there's someone watching and they don't know you as Savior and as Lord. Father, I pray that they would reach out to you and they say, Lord, will you save me? Lord, will you forgive me my sins? And, Father, we thank you that you freely... And yet, frankly, forget. Help us, O oh God, to walk these days. To walk upright in front of all that we would meet. To walk in the spirit. To walk in the newness of life. To walk in the newness of, of, of love as well to you. God, help us to, to be an assembly here that doesn't just talk about love, but walks in that love. 
And Lord, we've we've been really sure to all that we would come across. Lord, not just keep it confined to the walls here, but Lord, bring it onto the streets, Lord, into the highways and the byways. And Father, that we might win some on the other side of the door. Lord, I pray you would bless us this day. Every head bowed here, every home represented, I pray, dear God, that you would bless. And Father, as we come back again this evening, pray you bless Paul as he brings your word to us. Father, we don't know who will be here or who will watch the line, but Lord, you do. So Father, I pray you'll prepare hearts even right now. And Lord, I pray that there will be rejoicing in in heaven this evening over one soul coming to repentance. Lord, we just commit ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. And we look to you, O God, for the rest of the day and the rest of this week. We pray all these things in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Folks, have a great, great, great day. And all went well. I'll see you tonight.